Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I am Devin Palma, and today I'll be talking about my gesture glove. Before getting started, let me introduce myself. Uh, currently, I am finishing the IoT Deep Dive Bootcamp. Uh, however, before starting this program, I was working as an IT operations assistant with Shockbyte, a server hosting company. Uh, my role is to ensure all operations such as security, audits, issue documentation, and vulnerability patching goes very smoothly. Uh, I also came to this boot camp with uh, a six years of additional coding experience. Um, some of my more recent projects include uh, a custom compiler based off of Lua, but made in Java, a declarative UI system for the Love 2D game engine, and a dynamic API request system to automate men menial, menial tasks at my job. Uh, so, Onto the project. <laughs> Why did I choose this project? Well, uh, electronic textiles, e-textiles, uh, wearable smart technology, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's always interested me. The idea of thoughtlessly augmenting your day-to-day -day capabilities, be it monitoring or controlling your environment, sounds like a sci-fi dream. <laughs> but with the IoT devices, I believe it to be a present-day reality. Uh, so the idea came to me around six weeks ago when I was just browsing through the internet and I came across a website for e-textiles and making them. And the concept of a data glove really interested me, but I shifted it over a bit more to fit what I wanted. Uh, again, I also chose this project because it really seemed like a challenge to me. Uh, the idea of textile creation mixed in with circuitry uh, to top it off, just some nice advanced coding uh, really did push me a bit on this project, but I had a lot of fun with it. And of course, while it's all fun and stuff, it does have other applications such as sign language recognition, VR interaction, or really any other application that requires digitizing your hand position. Yeah. So what is a gesture glove? Uh, in layman's terms, you move your hand through a series of gestures in order to run a function, be it turning on a light, sending data to the cloud, or even turning on the coffee machine in the morning. <laughs> uh, there is all the nitty gritty. You guys would like to read that, but let's go on to the core circuitry of the circuit. Uh, on the right, five flex sensors, one for each finger. Uh, on the bottom are potentiometers for accurate voltage dividing. And there's the red rectangle, a analog multiplexer, allowing me to read lots of flex sensors if I wanted the capabilities. And lastly, we have the argon, the core of the circuit. Uh, here, you can see each part I used in my box. Designing all these components was quite a struggle. Uh, each part is very precisely measured for every single component of my box. It's very tightly packed in there. Uh, was very fun. Uh, next is a little diagram I wrote up on the code structure because my code was a bit too much for explaining in a one paragraph. Uh, it all starts at the multiplexer library, which is a custom library that I wrote to communicate with the multiplexer and read the flex values. That then feeds into a multiplexer collector. I love that name. Uh, that basically just reads from the original library and, or the the original driver and collects it, stores it in a nice little structure and allows me to manipulate it very easily. It also supports saving and loading from the EEPROM, which is used later. Uh, then there is the program controller. This, this basically stores a few hand positions and compares them against the current hand position to give me the most accurate one. So if I had, for example, a phone position stored, it would store that. Or if I had a rock on sign stored, it would be able to compare against both of those and give me the best value. Uh, then alongside that, the program controller is also connected into a serial, into the serial communications, which allows me to communicate with it over a GUI I made in processing. Uh, this allows me to very, very easily tell the uh, controller to say, hey, if this is a gun, program that. Or, hey, this is the rock on sign, program that, and so on, so on. 
Uh, once I have a few of these hand signs programmed, I can then click request best. And that will tell me the expected hand position my hand is currently in. Uh, just by comparing all the different hand positions and just getting what's closest. Uh, so now that I have the best hand position, I can then throw that into a sampler and the sampler just takes a few hundred or a few thousand samples every few hundred milliseconds and returns whatever the highest sample value was. And that way, it, it, in short, it's just a filter. <laughs> It's about all of that sampler is, is just filters out any small deviations. Uh, and lastly, that is all fed into a command handler, which is how I communicate with the outside world, be it turning on lights, throwing data in the cloud, etc. Uh, again, very broad description of how the code works, but that is the general idea about it. Uh, so now that I've gone over the boring parts, <laughs> about how it all works. Let's see the demonstration. Um, uh, in this demo, I used Adafruit.io, a nice cloud-based data storage and dashboard. Here you can see I count from zero to three using my fingers and the light goes green. And when I count from three to zero, the light goes red. Uh, Again, the demo only takes advantage of two simple four-step gestures. However, with the way my code is designed, the code could easily be expand. This could easily be expanded to include just additional gesture positions, sequence of gestures, additional environmental controls, so on. Uh, so, for some of the major challenges I faced, uh, creating a flex sensor, I probably made a good thirty to fifty prototypes before I was happy with the values it was giving me. Um, creating the glove in general, I struggled a lot with the textile side of things, such as stitch, stitching on the flex sensors, routing wires, and just generally keeping the glove together. Uh, massive, massive shout out to my mom who helped me immensely with that. Uh, I also struggled with packing the circuit onto my wrists. I had a lot of components and no custom PCB requiring me to go through various iterations on the wrist mounted box. Definitely would like to make a PCB if possible next. <laughs> uh, and lastly, just getting consistent measurements from the flex sensors. Since they were homemade, they weren't, they weren't to the grade I would like them to be. I have ideas on how to improve them, but I had to deal with what I had. Um, uh, again, of course, I, with all those challenges in mind, I am still nowhere near happy or complete with this glove, and I would still love to continue it on from here on. Uh, yeah, here are just some of the goals I have for where I would like to go next with it. And um, with that, I'm in short done with my presentation.